So today we'll be learning about stopping SQL injection using Amazon Web Services Web Application Firewall. And this is going to be a pretty long tutorial because we'll learn about a setup in AWS and at the same time, how we can associate certain web rules or right, certain web access control lists with the target application load balancer. And it's going to be quite exciting because we will learn end to end about how to set up simple services and then after which we can learn how to protect them very quickly. So right in front of us, we have Amazon Web Services Console. So this is the place where we can configure all right, where we want to set up our servers, where we want to place our application load balancer all right, to protect our services and how we can write different kind of rules. And at the same time, all of these are made available programmatically. So you can do the same too. So let's go ahead and click under EC2. All right, so here I am already logged in and you can see on the top right corner, I have Lloyd Liang Yang here, and I'm in a specific region here. All right, so here we are on AP Southeast One. So depending on where you want to park your resources, that could be closest, okay, to the consumers or the users who may be consuming your services. So that's really highly dependent on the region that you want to operate in. So in this case, for our case, we are in Singapore. All right, so this is where I'm situated in, and this is the place where we have our instances being set up as well as our application load balancer. And additionally, Web Application Firewall is a region-specific service. So what we need to do now is to inspect the architecture that we have set up before we look into the Web Application Firewall. So right in front of us, I have the following, which is the load balancer. So this load balancer is an application load balancer. So do note that AWS WAF can only be associated with one type of load balancer, which is application load balancer. It can likewise be associated with API Gateway. It can be associated with the GraphQL. All right, so right here, you can see the following. We have the DNS name here. So let's go ahead and click on it to copy it, open up a new tab, paste it, hit enter on that. And we can see right here, okay, we got the application load balancer working as intended. And on the back end, all right, we have an EC2 instance that has a content management system. And in this case, a WordPress site running for us. So what we want to do next, right, as you can see here, we have a search bar, okay, or search for us to input all sorts of parameters or all sorts of values. So if I go back into the EC2 management console, what I want to do now is to enter WAF, Web Application Firewall, select WAF and Shield, clicked on it. All right, and what I want to do now is to explain to you what exactly is the AWS WAF service. So AWS WAF is a Web Application Firewall is to protect all of your application load balancers or your API gateways. And of course, it is region specific, all right? So if you have CloudFront distributions, you can go ahead and select on the global CloudFront, all right? So that you can create those web access control lists, which has a list of rules, conditional statement check that you want to put in to protect your resources. So in this case, we have our ALB, our application load balancer, situated in Singapore. So let's go ahead and click on Singapore. So Singapore is in Asia Pacific, it is in Southeast Asia. All right, so what we can see here is we do not have any web ACL. So let's go ahead and click on the Create Web ACL. So once you clicked on it, let's give it a name. So we call this the WordPress all right, Web ACL, okay? And of course, it will help us populate the CloudWatch metric name. So this metric is important because whenever we want to take a look at certain triggers or we want to take a look at certain notifications or alarms that you want to build, this will be the place for you to go to. Next up, all right, we have the regional resources, or you can select the CloudFront distributions. And in this case, we can select at AWS resources. And in this case, let's go ahead and select application load balancer, select the ALB that we've created, click under add. Okay, so once you have that, click next. Okay, so here is the place where we want to add our rules. You can add it during the creation of the web access control list, or you can add it after. So whichever case, it is fine. So let's go ahead and click under add rules. So what I want to do now is show you both. All right, once manage rules where it is being updated automatically, the checks against different part of the request are likewise being updated regularly. And the second one is our own rules and rule group. So this is the place where you want to create your own rules and you want to inspect more precisely, more specifically for the type of resources or workloads that you have. All right, so let's go ahead and click under add manage rule groups. Okay, so right here, what we want to take a look at 
are AWS managed rule groups. Okay, so here we have bot control. So bots are sometimes bad bots because they consume a lot of your resources instead of providing them to the legitimate requests. So we have admin protection, IP reputation list, anonymous IP list, and so on. So in today's tutorial, we want to check, all right, and get blocking capabilities against SQL injection attacks. So let's go ahead and select SQL database all right, and select add to web ACL. Okay, so once you have that here, you can take a look at a did and it can tell you more details of the managed root groups. So as you can see here, all right, we have the version. So you can always subscribe to a simple notification service topic so that you can begin getting updates whenever there are changes, there are new updates to the managed rules. So here you can take a look at the rules within it. So here we have SQLI, which is SQL injection. So we're looking for body, cookie, URI path, query arguments, extended patents. Okay. So you can always read up a lot more in the documents of it. Okay. And of course, we can always enable scope down statement. So you perhaps you want to inspect just a part of the website against SQL injection. Okay. So you can do that too. So go ahead and click save rule. All right. So now that we have saved the rule, we have turned on, all right, the SQL injection all right so change is safe go all the way down click add rules all right so that will add the rule into our web access control list next up we can select say add my own rules and rule groups okay so in this case we can either have a list of ip addresses that we would block or allow we can build them with rule builder or we can use existing rule groups that has been made available and reusable across all of the web access control list that you want to so in this case we'll take a look at rule builder so in this case say we want to block everyone from being able to access, all right, the login page of WordPress, which is wp-admin, all right? So I want to enter here, okay, block admin access. It's a regular rule, and we have the matching of the statement, so we choose an inspection option. So here, we are looking for a URI path, and we can say the following, okay, starts with string, all right? We enter slash wp-admin, okay? So at the bottom, all right, Action is to block if it matches the statement above, all right? And we can click Add Rule. So once you click Add Rule here, okay, that's it. All right, you can see right here, we have the Manage Rule at the top, all right, we check for all SQL injection coming in. And now we have the second priority here, which then helps us, all right, check for possible access to a URL path, which is admin, all right, pages for WordPress. So here, one thing to take note of is the Web Capacity Unit. The Web Capacity Unit depends on the number of rules that you have place into the web access control list and of course this is a soft quota 1500 wcu uh, so ensure that you always fine-tune the rules as much as you can and final and default action so if it doesn't match any rule then we'll allow the request to go into the backend resource so let's go ahead and click next and then see here we have the set rule priority so you can always decide to move the priorities up and down so it will check first for the sql injection followed by the block admin access so you may have a huge list of checks and rules that you want to run against so you may want to determine which one of them come first which one of them at the center and which one of them at the end click next okay and then we have the sample request click next all right so we have the review of the entire web access control list go ahead and click create web ACL. All right, so give it some time. So once the creation is completed, all right, we can associate with the specific resources that you want to, or you can associate with the resources that you have, all right, and then immediately from there, the protection comes in and the inspection will go through AWS web first before it goes into your resources or even before it goes into the load balancer rules that you have, all right? So the web ACL, the AWS web service will be the first place Right, the first service to do the full inspection of the request before it is being sent over to the application load balancer and all the way, all right, to the resources on the back end. So right here you can see the following, success. You successfully created Web ACL, WordPress Web ACL. So let's go ahead and click on it. All right, so once you're clicked in, you have the request per five minute period. So you can see all the requests that is getting inspected, all right, by the, or getting a hit, all right, into this Web ACL. Next up, we have the associated AWS resources. Okay, so here you can see we have the following, WordPress ALB, all right, which is the application load balancer that we have, and then we have all the rules right here, okay? So here, what we can do is we can go back to the DNS name of the application load balancer. We can do a refresh here, and the protection is already in place, okay? So what I want to do now is go ahead and try a SQL injection against this application load balancer and see what happens. So I can enter, say, single code, 
or one equal one semicolon. All right, you can see right here, this is the payload. Go ahead and click search. And that's it, fall tree forbidden. We have been blocked as a result of a SQL injection attempt. Okay, so now if I go back to the website and remember one other custom rule that we have developed, remember that, which is to block admin access. So if I go into the URL part of this, I can enter wp-admin, I hit enter on this, likewise. That is a block. So we are able to create both managed rules as well as custom rules to do the blocking against these type of attacks. So one more thing I want to show you here. If we go back all right, to the web ACL main page on the overview, right, if you see right here at the bottom, you can see all the sample requests are coming in. So we turn this on and you can see the following. All right, So we got the following, which is all right. this has a managed rule, SQLi rule set. We can click on it and then we can see the request. And the request is the following, right? get slash question mark s as you can see here all right single quote or one equal one and this was blocked by the manage rule right here okay and we can see the timestamp for it likewise if i take a look at the second one wp admin this was a block okay so again this was successfully blocked with the metric block admin access so we can take a look at those sample requests and in order for us to do a full logging for it you want to go on the logging and metrics and you want to turn on logging for it because if you want to see all of the requests and all of the metrics, all of the rules that match, deny, allow, count, and many other advanced queries that you want to run, you have to turn on all right, for the logging destination so they can see all of that requests. So that was a very basic tutorial for us to enable a simple WordPress site, a content management system into the internet on Amazon Web Services. And at the same time, building up our application load balancer and associating web application firewall rule to this specific ALB so that you're able to protect your resources by using either managed rules, all right, or you can begin a process of protecting all right, based on the custom rules that you want to build because it's more specific to the resources that you want to protect. So once again, I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial. So remember to like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you can be kept abreast about all of the cybersecurity tutorials that we run right here.